Statistics and Excel, bell curve batting average comparison part number two. Get ready, taking a deep breath, holding it in for 10 seconds, looking forward to a smooth, soothing Excel. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we basically built this from a blank worksheet, but we started in a prior presentation. So if you're starting from a blank worksheet, you may want to begin back there. However, if you do have access to this workbook, there's six tabs currently down below. The two example tabs, in essence, answer keys. The two practice tabs having pre-formatted cells so you can get to the heart of the practice problem. The two blank tabs is where we started with a blank worksheet and are continuing at this point in time. Quick recap of what we did last time. We went online to find some resources for baseball statistics. We downloaded them in a CSV or comma delimited type of format and then we put them into our blank data so that we can sort the information populated in a table, filter it, pick up what we need and then copy it over to our blank tab looking at just basically the batting averages. We converted the batting averages to a decimal format so that we have whole numbers with them now. So now we have the 60 representing basically the 60 percent here for uh, 2000 or 1920 and 2022. So we have the two years so that we can compare the two. We did our standard data calculations, the mean standard deviation median mode for 1920 and 2022. Looking at the differences between the two, we noted that the mean is similar to the median and mode for both years, which would indicate that we could have a bell-shaped curve which might help us with our uh, comparisons. So now we are constructing our bell-shaped curve, starting with the 1920 data. We plotted from negative five, which is unusual. You might say, why would we have an X of negative five? The batting averages would need to be between one and 100, but four standard deviations goes down to negative five here. And so we wanna have all of the data that we could on the bell curve, so we have a nice smooth bell curve and we can kind of double check that our data adds up to 100 as we did here when we did our norm.dist calculation this set of data basically adds up to 100 percent uh now and that is useful to be able to see that and in part it's doable because we converted the stats which were in percent or decimal format to you know whole numbers okay so now let's also do our z-score, which is a, a nice thing to be able to look at, especially when we're comparing two different years. Because when we're talking about people's batting averages, we, we might say, well, look, the things were a lot different in 1920 than 2022, but we can see where they were relative to the field at that point in time, relative to the mean, uh, and that's gonna give the z-score how far away from that middle point. So I can go to the home tab, font group let's make this black white let's center it and do the z score so the z score is going to be equal to brackets i'm going to take the x value which is a negative five in this case minus the mean the diff distance from the mean for 1920 data close up the brackets and divide that by the standard deviation so there we have it and enter now I want to copy that down, so I'm going to double click on it. Anything that's not in the current field I'm working in, then I want to make absolute. That's going to be these two in column J. So the J2, I'll put my cursor in there, F4 on the keyboard, dollar sign before the J and the two, put my cursor on J3, F4 on the keyboard, or dollar sign before the J and the three, enter, back on it, double click on the fill handle to bring it on down. So there we have it. So if we're looking at a, a like a, a 32% uh, percent batting average, then that's uh, 3.08 likelihood for that exact uh, area. And it's 1.06 on the Z score or 1.06 away from the middle point. The middle point being right here at around 24 to 25, that's where the Z score hits zero because of course that is the mean uh, for the 1920 data. So then we can also take a look and and try to compare this to our actual data. 
So what I'm gonna do now is pick up our actual data to compare to the actual data. We could take these percentages and multiply them times the count over here. Let's calculate the count. The count equals count. And then I'll take my data for 1920. So it's just gonna count all of the data and enter. So there's uh, 629 count over here. This is gonna be equal to the count and we'll count this data. And here we have 822. So I could multiply these percentages times the 629 and get whole and get numbers that we would think would basically represent if I had that sample using like the bell curve uh, data. Or I could try to convert my data into percentages so I can compare. And that's probably the better way to go here. So what I'm going to do is call this the frequency. So this is gonna be the frequency. And I'm gonna say, uh, let's make that home tab. Let's say actual, actual data frequency. And let's wrap the text, home tab, alignment, wrap the text, center it and make it black and white. And so there we go, that should work. I'll, I'll check the spelling hopefully later. And the frequency, we're gonna see how many times in this data set uh, do we get a count of X. So uh, X being in this case above five and uh, less than or equal to four. Or for if I was talking down here, which would be more common for batting average, right? It would be up to one uh, up to and including one uh, from zero, zero to one. That's what the frequency is gonna give us, it's our buckets. So I'm gonna say this equals the frequency, which is a spill array, the data set, I'm gonna pick over the data, which is over here and say, boom, there's our data and then comma. And now we want the bins array, which is gonna be this information, control shift down and control backspace there we have it, close up the table and enter and it spills it on down. So there we have our counts. It's going a little far here. So I'd like to remove that last one or actually it has a number in it. So maybe I should make this go down one more.